One common denominator that all successful people have is they are religious about their routines and their routines lead to them putting in their work versus having to wake up every single morning and think, what's my goal? I gotta go after my goal. It's like, no, I follow the routine. The routine leads to me putting in work and chasing after that goal. Welcome back to the Leaders Only Podcast, where we talk about business, leadership mindset, and just pretty much anything revolved around building an incredible life. You know, one of the reasons that I started this podcast is because I felt like on the way to where we're at now, there wasn't really a place to go to learn tangible skills that are needed in order to succeed and further yourself and just get better overall in every area of your life. And so some background about me, you know, I built a sales company that does over eight figures a year. I own over $10 million worth of real estate, and I built a multiple seven-figure income that's streamlined and in all honesty, doesn't really need me. I plan on teaching you and documenting everything that I learned along the way. And if you get something out of today's message, if you can do me a favor, if you can like, share, and subscribe, it will give us the ability to further our message and help more people, which is what we're all about. Thank you guys so much. Let's dive in. So today, we're going to talk about something that's incredibly important. And to be honest, I was a little bit nervous when preparing for today, only because I wanted to make sure that today's message didn't come across as some generic goal setting message. I didn't want it to be like that. And I didn't want to be in this box with all these other people putting out goal setting messages and goal setting content and all of that stuff. And and here's the deal. I'm, I'm not opposed to those things, but I just don't want to put myself in this box of being cheesy. I didn't want to put myself in this box of, uh, you know, go do step one, two, three, four, and five, and all your dreams will come true. Because in all honesty, that's not the case, right? That is not the case. You're not just going to go follow step one, two, three, four, and five, and everything be perfect, sunshine and rainbows, and all of a sudden everything's gonna work out for you. That's not how it works. There's a process to accomplishing a goal. There's a process to achieving success. And I wanna go over what that process looks like for you today. So that way when certain things pop up, it doesn't throw you off course. Because what typically happens, Mike Tyson always says, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. You might have this incredible plan, but if you don't understand that adversity is coming the moment you create that plan, if you don't understand that there's gonna be problems and things that set you back the moment you create that plan, then you are setting yourself up for failure and you're setting yourself up for disappointment. And so I wanna be brutally honest about the, the process in which you are going to go through in order to hit a goal because it's not sunshine and rainbows and it's not as simple as ABC, one, two, three. That's not as, it's not that simple, right? There's a process and there's setbacks along the way that gets you ready to attain success and or equip you to become the person necessary and that's deserving of the success. And so I wanna go over what that process looks like with you today. And one of the reasons I get excited about this is to be honest with you, you know, talking about where you're going, talking about your goals, talking about your dreams, talking about your aspirations, talking about all the great things you wanna do with your life, it's energizing, it's exciting, it makes you wanna get up every single morning. You know, I was talking to somebody two days ago and it was an old friend of mine from high school and he reached out to me and said, Matt, is there any way we can set up a meeting I'm going through a hard time in my life and, and I just can't figure out how to get out of it. He said, I'm, I'm successful in my career right now, but I just feel so stagnant. I feel so stuck and I just don't know what to do. And I haven't talked to him in about 13 years, but obviously if you were my teammate before, you will always be my teammate. And so I hopped on a, on a zoom call with him and we were trying to figure out what the problem was. What was the diagnosis behind some of maybe the depression that he was experiencing? And what it really came back to was he didn't have any goal in front of him. He didn't have anything that he was striving for. He didn't have a new milestone that he was trying to reach. Because when you have a goal, when you have a new milestone that you're trying to reach, when there's an achievement that you are chasing, it's energizing. It makes you want to get up in the, every single morning because you're waking up every single morning with a definite of purpose. You're waking up every single morning with a goal on your mind. But if you wake up every single day, and you don't have something that you're striving for then yeah, it's easy to get complacent. Yeah, it's easy to feel stagnant. Yeah, it's easy to get depressed and feel anxiety and doubt and worry because you're not progressing. And so one of the things that I told him, I said, you will always feel like you have a lack of happiness in your life when you're not progressing. Because like Tony Robbins says, happiness equals progress and progress equals happiness. So you will feel the happiest in your life when you feel like you're progressing and moving towards something that's going to validate the better version of you. And so that's why I love talking about goals. And that's why I love talking about, you know, the life that you want to build and the dreams that you want to have. All that's great. But once again, there's a process to achieving it. And I want to go over that process with you guys today. So when it comes to achieving a goal, there's typically a four-step process that you're going to have to go through. I want to be upfront with you. It never goes away. It never goes away. It never goes away. And it never will go away. 
Because the moment you get to step number four, it reintroduces you to step number one. And one reintroduces you to two, two to three, three to four, and four back to one. So this is a process that you are never going to have the opportunity to get away from. So we have to just accept it up front and be okay with it and then just follow the process itself. Let's talk about step number one in the process. Step number one in the goal hitting process is we have to get clear on what it is that we want. We have to clearly define our goals. And I know we've all heard this before, so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it because once again, this is the cheesiness that I was talking about, but it's true, you have to get clear. What do you want in your marriage? What do you want in your business? What do you want in the relationship that you have with your children? What do you want your financial situation to look like? What do you want? And then you have to re-engineer a strategy, a step-by-step -step process in order to execute and accomplish the goal. So number one, we got to get clear on what it is that we want. And then we have to have a clearly defined plan on how we are going to accomplish that goal. Why is that so important? Because when things are blurry, when things are unclear, naturally you will slow down in order to protect yourself. And let me explain what I'm talking about. You know, two days ago, it was pouring rain here in San Diego. And if you know, San Diego is normally sunshine, blue skies all the time. And it was pouring rain. And I'm the type of person that typically likes to drive fast because I'm always in a race with the GPS to how fast I can get to my destination. Probably not the safest thing I know. It's just the way my mind works and I'm competitive by nature. But I normally drive extremely fast. But two days ago when it was raining, do you think I was driving as fast as I normally do? Absolutely not. And the reason is, is because I was having a harder time seeing what was in front of me. It wasn't clear that day. And so naturally when it's raining, it's foggy, it's darker outside, the cars in front of me are splashing water up onto my windshield. Things are, are less clear. And because it was less clear, I couldn't clearly see what was front of me. And so by default, I naturally slowed down in order to protect myself. And that's okay. That's normal. But why do I tell you this? Because if we are unclear about our goals, if we are unclear about what it is that we want, if we do not have a defined plan on how to get from point A to point B, then naturally we are going to slow down because it's part of our human nature in order to protect ourselves. So the more clear you are and the more clear the plan is on how to get from point A to point B, the faster you will go. I want you to remember this. Clearly define goals, remove thinking, and the removal of thinking accelerates execution. So if you want to accelerate your execution, and if you want to accelerate the execution of those that you're leading, then we have to get clear on what it is that we want and also the plan and what's required to achieve those goals at hand. So that's number one. So then after we get clear on what it is that we want, number two is we get to work. We get after it, we start to execute. So that's number two. You start working, you're executing, you're in the trenches, you're following the plan. But do all plans go perfect? Absolutely not. Which leads me to process number three, step three in the process. You will then encounter a problem. You're gonna encounter problems, it's inevitable. There's no way to perfectly plan something to the point that there are no problems because there's always going to be room for error. There's always going to be room for human mistakes. These things are naturally going to happen. So number three is you're going to encounter a problem. And by the way, even the most perfect architect experiences problems when trying to build something. They can have a perfect blueprint, a perfect strategy. Everything can be written in stone. Everything is rock solid, but then a contractor makes a mistake. Somebody runs plumbing three feet away from where it's supposed to be. And all of a sudden that's a problem that they encounter. So then after we encounter that problem, that leads us to step number four. We got to diagnose what caused the problem so it doesn't keep rehappening. And typically when diagnosing that problem, it's going to come back to one of two things. Number one, you. There's something about your own abilities, your own skill sets, your own mindset, your own leadership, your own discipline. There's something about your own communication style. There's something about you that's leading to problems that you are now encountering. So we got to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, what is it about me that's causing these problems that's keeping us from hitting the goal? So that's the first thing that it could be. The second thing that it could be is there's a strategy problem. There's something wrong with your strategy. Something's not adding up. One plus one is not equaling two. So we have to figure out what about our strategy is not working. If it's the fitness side of things, Maybe your macros are off. Maybe you didn't properly calculate the amount of macros that you need to intake and or not intake in order to hit the dietary goal. Maybe you're doing too much cardio and or not enough cardio. Maybe you're not lifting and you should be lifting. Whatever it might be. Maybe your strategy is just off. So you got to look at the strategy at hand. What is the problem here? 
What is the thing that's keeping us from accelerating? What is the thing that's creating resistance? What is the thing that's keeping us from being able to move faster? So once again, number one is we get clear. Number two, we get to work. Number three, because we get to work, we now encounter problems. And then after we encounter problems, we now got to diagnose what the what's causing the problem. And typically what's causing the problem is either you and your own abilities and or a system strategy and or a strategy error. And we got to figure out which one is it. And then once we diagnose it, then we got to get back to number one, which is clarity. We got to re-get clear on what we want. Then we have to restart to execute. And then as we're executing again, we now encounter another problem. And then through encountering that problem, we then have to diagnose what caused that problem. Then after we diagnose that problem, then we get clear again. And then we get clear and then we start to work again. And then we start to work and then we encounter more problems. And then we encounter those problems. Then we diagnose those problems. Then we diagnose those problems. And then we got to get clear again. And then it's just this rinse and repeat process. So this is why I was telling you when it comes to hitting goals, these four things you're never going to be able to avoid. That is a step-by-step -step process to hitting any goal that you will always have to go through. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have not had the opportunity to subscribe just yet, if you can go ahead and do that, that would be incredible. We have about 10,000 plus active listeners and not all of you have subscribed just yet. So if you guys can go ahead and do that, that would be incredible. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the rest of the episode. So now that you understand what the process looks like when it comes to setting and achieving goals, now I wanna go over some things with you that I think will help you in the process of actually hitting those goals. So I wanna go over those things with you today. So here's some tips. Number one, we need to make sure that our goals are 30 to 90 days out. Our goals don't need to be six months out. Our goals don't need to be 12 months out. Yes, we need to have a long-term vision for our life, but goals are short-term, vision is long-term. So we need to have an idea, where do I wanna be in 30 days? Where do I wanna be in 90 days? The reason this is so important is because our minds like to touch things now. We don't like waiting for things. It's the reason why so many people in America have such bad spending habits because all of a sudden they want something, they swipe their card. It's why people love Amazon because they can literally purchase something and then it's at their doorstep within 24 hours. Is they want it now, they want it quickly. So we have to realize that that's how our mind works. So if we have goals that are six months out or 12 months out, that's so far out that it's easy for yourself to lose excitement. But when it's 30 days out and it's within striking distance and it's tangible and it's touchable, now all of a sudden there's a different level of excitement, there's a different level of energy when it comes to investing the time necessary to get that result. So when it comes to setting goals, make sure that they are 30 to 90 days out. Do not have them longer than that. Think of it almost like a sprint, okay? 30 to 90 day sprint, take a weekend off. 30 to 90 day sprint, take a weekend off. Number two is success is not a marathon. Success is a whole bunch of sprints added up to be the size of a marathon. You know, you hear all the time, success is a marathon, be patient. Success is a marathon, be patient. And I hate that analogy. And the reason is, is if you were constantly looking at success as a marathon, you're going to pace yourself when it comes to hitting your goals. You're going to pace yourself. Think about it. If you were running a sprint, right, or if you were running 100 feet versus running three miles, aren't you going to pace yourself on three miles? Of course you are. But you're going to sprint on that 100 feet because you can see the finish line. So if all of a sudden you have this success as a marathon mentality, then you are going to pace yourself all the way to your goal which means it's probably gonna take you a heck of a lot longer to accomplish it. But if you're looking at it, okay, I gotta sprint from here to here, and then sprint from here to here, and then I gotta sprint from here to here, and then I gotta sprint from here to here, and all of a sudden, you start to move towards your goals a heck of a lot faster. Number three, we need to have routines in place that lead to us putting in the work. We need to have routines in place. You know, this is so important. One common denominator that all successful people have is they are religious about their routines. They are religious about their routines because they don't rely on personal discipline, they rely on their routines and their routines lead to them putting in their work. The routines lead to them chasing the goal versus having to wake up every single morning and think, what's my goal? I gotta go after my goal. It's like, no, I follow the routine. The routine leads to me putting in work and chasing after that goal. So like, for instance, I'll give you an example of what my today look like. I woke up today at 5.30 a.m. I ate 30 grams of protein within the first 30 minutes of me waking up. Then I did about 40 minutes of work on my computer, working on my business. Then what I did is I went on a 30 minute walk. Then I did 30 minutes of lifting. Then I sat in the sauna. Then I went in the cold plunge. Then I got ready. And then I had my first meeting at 9 a.m. And that is my routine every single day, like clockwork religiously, because it leads to me working at 9 a.m. It leads to me putting in the work. 
And it leads to me going after that goal that is clearly defined in my mind, like what I talked about in the process a second ago. Number four, we need to simplify the goal. You know, one of the mistakes that I used to make all the time, there were so many moving parts to my goal. This is what I want to do in my income. This is what I want to do in my business. This is what I want to do in my health. There was just all these moving parts rather than just having one clearly defined outcome. So if I would encourage you to do something, it's have one clearly defined outcome, maybe tops two clearly defined outcomes, because it's very difficult for your mind to focus in on more than one thing. So if you're giving your mind four focuses, well, then that's the opposite of focus because focus is following one course until successful, not following four. So if I can encourage you to do something, it's simplify the process, simplify what it is that you want. So you don't have all these moving parts and all these different things that you're chasing. It's just one thing and one thing only that you're chasing. And now you can go after it relentlessly. Number five, don't be quiet about your goals. Tell everyone about them. You know, we always hear people all the time say, hey, I'm going to let my, my results do the talking. But the problem is, is people's results never end up doing the talking. It's those that talk that end up doing the results because they're holding themselves accountable and using everyone else around them to help hold themselves accountable. So if I were you, I would tell everyone about your goals. I would tell everyone about them, your mom, your dad, your business partners, your teammates, your sidelines, your uplines, your downlines, right? Everyone in your life, let them know what your goals are for two main reasons. Number one, like I just talked about, it holds you accountable. It keeps you on track because now you have a whole bunch of people watching. I can't tell you how many goals that I threw out there and I was like, oh, dang, now I got to do it because everybody just heard me. But guess what? It was the fact that everyone heard me and be, me being a person of my word that made me execute and go do the work necessary in order to hit the goal, in order to hit the target. So if everyone knows, it holds you accountable. But the second reason you want to tell everyone around you is because it now enrolls and enlists everyone else in your goal. And let me explain. If all of a sudden I tell 100 people my goal, well, now there's 100 people that are thinking about my goal. There's 100 people that are potentially meeting people that they can refer over to me to help me with my goal. So the more people that I have hearing my goal and the more people I have thinking about my goal, the more people that are going to be referring me information and or people that could potentially help me accomplish that goal. So you do not want to be quiet about your goals. You want to tell the world about them because if everyone knows, it holds you accountable and it leads to referrals that can end up helping you accomplish the goal in the first place. Number six, keep your goals in front of you at all times. Whether you make it the screensaver on your phone, you write it on your bathroom mirror, you laminate it and you put it in your shower, wherever you can look at your goals, no matter what, on a daily basis, put it in front of you. Because what dominates your thinking will determine the outcome of your life and whatever you think about the most, you will move towards. So if you were constantly thinking about your goals because they're always in front of you, well then guess what? you are going to have better odds in moving towards those goals versus moving away from them because you stop thinking about them, you stop looking at them, you stop even knowing that they exist because they're not right in front of you. I want my goals in front of me at all times because the more I can see it, the more I can visualize it, the more I encounter it, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm executing on it, and the more I'm executing on it, the better odds I have at getting a result. So always, always, always keep your goals in front of you. Number seven, get your family on the same page with you. Because if you're moving in one direction and your family's moving in another direction, it's going to create friction. Friction leads to arguments and or bitterness. And that leads to a bad state of mind because now you're trying to execute, but your family's all upset and mad. And that's not good. Every single time I set a goal, every single time I put out a plan, I get my entire family involved. I get my wife involved. I get my daughter involved. And the reason I do this is, A, it's way more fulfilling, all right? I don't want to go accomplish the goal just me, myself, and I. I want to accomplish the goal with the people that matter most to me in my life. So that way, it's not I hit a goal, it's we hit a goal, and it makes it a lot more fulfilling. But then also, it makes sure that they realize that when I'm working, I'm working towards our family goal, not just towards a personal goal. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier for them to receive the fact that I'm working because they know that I'm doing it for us, not me. So that's a big part of it. And the last thing I would say regarding that is have reward systems for when we do hit it. So for instance, if I'm talking to my daughter, I might say, hey, listen, you know, this week, daddy's going to be super, super busy. I'm going to be home to tuck you in at night. I will be there with you in the morning. But this, this week, daddy's going to be super busy. But guess what? After I accomplish the goal this week, guess what we're doing? Next week, you and me are spending all day at Disneyland together, just you, me, and mommy. Does that sound good? And they get super excited. 
But here's the deal. I got to hit the goal. You got to encourage me to hit this goal. You got to help me hit this goal. And then if we do that, we're going to Disneyland next week for an entire day. So now guess what? Now my daughter's like, hey, did you hit the goal, daddy? Did you hit the goal, daddy? Did you hit the goal, daddy? Because she wants to go to Disneyland. So she's just as excited about my goal as me because now she's looking at it as if daddy hits goal, we go to Disneyland, which is incredible for her. So I enrolled my family in the goal and in the vision with me versus me just doing it all on my own and separating the two. This way we don't have any resentment. This way everyone's on the same page. And this way, everyone's moving in the same direction as one, as a family unit, the way that it's supposed to be. Eight, we need to have an emotional attachment to whatever goal we want to accomplish. It's not enough just to say it. And let me explain what I mean, okay? And if you're watching this on YouTube, it might make it a little bit easier. If you're just listening to this on the podcast or on Spotify, whatever it might be, it might be a little bit more difficult to see this without visualization, but I'm gonna do the best I can to communicate it, okay? So you have your conscious mind, and you have your subconscious mind. When you say, I wanna make a million dollars this month, that's your conscious mind. But when all of a sudden you say, I wanna make a million dollars this month, and there's an emotional reason behind it, there's an emotional attachment to it, it means something to you. When it means something to you, it now goes from your conscious mind to your subconscious mind, which means that your mind is now thinking about it even when you were not consciously thinking about it. And if your subconscious mind is thinking about it, even though you might not be thinking about it at that exact moment, that means that your subconscious mind is now utilizing the RAS, which is called a reticulator activating system, which is part of your subconscious mind, to then filter in what's needed for you to hit the goal and filter out the distractions that would keep you from hitting the goal. So the more something means to you, the more it matters to you, the longer it will stay in your subconscious mind. And the more something's in your subconscious mind, the more the RAS will go to work to help filter in what's needed for you to accomplish the goal. But if you just say something one time or you think about it one time and there's no emotional attachment to it, then it will never go from the conscious mind to the subconscious mind, which means that your mind is only working on hours instead of off hours when it comes to accomplishing the task and or goal at hand. So if I can recommend something, it's figure out a way to be emotionally attached to the goal. Get emotionally attached to it to the point that it means something to you and it's not just some milestone that's on a checklist of things that you want to accomplish, but it actually means something to you. It means something to your family. It means something to your well-being. It means something to the vision that you guys have for your life. The more something means to you, the easier it becomes to root it in your subconscious. And once again, if it's in your subconscious, your RAS and your unconscious mind will now go to work to filter in what's needed and filter out what isn't when it comes to hitting that goal that's in front of you. Number nine, we have to set unrealistic yet realistic goals. And let me explain what I mean. I don't want you to be so realistic to the point that it doesn't stretch you, it doesn't challenge you, and it doesn't push you to become better. I also don't want you to set goals based off what you've done in the past because that's a realistic way to set a goal. All right, I've done this in the past, so that means that I can probably do this in the future. I don't want you doing that. I want you setting goals that are outside your reach. I want you to set goals that are gonna challenge you. I want you to set goals that are gonna push you that you don't necessarily know how to accomplish, but you know that you have it within you to be able to accomplish it. So we want to set goals that are right outside our comfort zone. So that way it challenges us to get outside of our comfort zone and what we are capable of doing. But I also don't want us to go so unrealistic that we don't try. You know, a huge mistake that I see people make all the time is they'll set these unrealistic goals that they don't genuinely believe in their heart that they can accomplish it. And so because they don't genuinely believe in their heart that they can accomplish it, they don't walk around with the same confidence. They don't execute with the same certainty. They don't work as hard because they already gave up in their mind, they're already doubting themselves. So you want a goal that's right outside your comfort zone that you don't know how you're gonna accomplish it, but you know that you can, versus a goal that's so far outside of what you think you can do that you don't even try at all. So make sure that you set unrealistically realistic goals so that way you're stretched, but not overwhelmed by it being way too far out and you not even believing you can have it in the first place. And last but not least, number 10, the moment you set a goal, the enemy wakes up. And let me say that one more time. The moment you set a goal, the enemy will wake up because the enemy is going to do everything in his power to keep you from accomplishing that goal. Because if you're a good person and you got a good heart and you do things with integrity, that means that typically your goals are going to impact people in a positive way. It's going to impact your own confidence in a positive way. It's going to impact your family in a positive way. And do you think the enemy wants you to have positivity in your life? Absolutely not. So the moment you set a goal, the enemy wakes up. But I just want you to remember 
that who could be against you if your creator is for you. Don't tell God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big your God is. Have faith that you can go do big things with your life and just know that you can. If the adversary is working on you, if the adversary is attacking you, that's because you have greatness within you and he's trying to keep you from ever tapping into it. So just realize if you set a goal, the enemy's waking up. And if he comes after you, that should be confidence boosting. That should be encouraging. That shouldn't make you doubt yourself. If anything, it should remind you that you're exactly where you need to be. Doubt, worry, anxiety, fear. These are all emotions used by the enemy. So whenever you feel them, that's the purest sign that you're exactly where you need to be and that you're doing exactly what you need to be doing. So guys, if you got something out of today's message, out of today's content, if you can do me a favor, if you can like, share, and subscribe, that mean the absolute world to us. Obviously, we put out all this information for free, and it's just because we want to make as big of a difference in the lives of other people as we possibly can and uh, pass on the information that we've been able to learn along the years. So if you guys can do me a favor, if you can like, share, and subscribe, once again, that would be incredible. And I'll see you guys next week on the Leaders Only Podcast.